this shit! Triple THS is brought to you by DraftKings.com and the support of 140 Patreon backers like you. What's up, Fight Fans? I'm the Madden 64 NFL license of mixed martial arts Tommy Toehold, and Anderson Silva is giving this whole TRT thing a second thought. You know, now that he's 43 and about to fight the living, breathing personification of death, Israel Adesanya. In a recent interview, Anderson said that if USADA could regulate it, we could get back some of these older fighters who might need TRT and have been forced to retire. It's normal, you guys. Anderson, you look different. No, it's normal, Anderson. Normal everything. TRT is the great show, you guys. I think everyone should he consider TRT. Yeah, guys. It's normal for to think this. Anderson, what made you change your mind on this topic? Are you also against anti-doping efforts? No, no, not at all. Anderson love you, Sada. Nobody should on the fight day take anything. On the fight day. The day of the fight. Just don't take stuff then. But you guys, don't you want the great show? Don't you want the legend fight like Vitor and Anderson and the Dan Henders? Well, of course, but you all had your own time. Yeah, but how can we not science, you guys? Science is the great show for all the world. It's help to people is normal. Look at what penis drugs have do for penises. Don't you fans want Anderson to kick fast with his feet arms? Like whoop! <laughs> we do, Anderson, but at what cost? No cost. It's not very expensive. I don't know. It seems like a slippery slope. I mean, what if we're able to bring back people from the dead soon? You telling me undead Rocky Marciano should enter the UFC? Yeah, it's normal. Just don't take any day the day of the fight. And all is normal. I hope that one day is normal for the TRT again, you guys. Trust me. Well, I better get back to my train for the fight the style bend. Bye, my fans in the world. Bro, listen to Anderson, okay? Vitor no need testosterone anymore, bro, because I have Jesus. But if I did, okay, I would wish I could take this, bro. Remember the year they banned TRT, bro? I was fight of the year, okay? I was spam spinning head kicks and break everyone's face so hard, bro. Bro, I would have laughed at Anderson front kick and then hip him in half like the Doom guy, bro. That's the power of testosterone. Right, that's what I'm saying. Like, when is enough enough? You started when you were 19, Vitor. Do I think 20 years at the top is enough? No way, bro. These young fighters. They dug TRT tour so hard, bro. And what is fight about? Is about who the best fight or who the best fight. So long as you have testosterone, Donna White, you don't have stars no more, bro. Give us all the testosterone and you have your stars again, man. Listen to Vitor, okay? I go to Stanford and Harvard. MMA bar guy, what do you think about all this? Fucking give him everything, bro. I don't give a fuck about fighter safety, bro. I want to watch giant fucked up freaks bash each other's faces in, bro. This is gladiator shit. Fucking Spartans and shit, bro. I eat Tarina Ball with every meal, bro. I don't give a fuck. They let me in the UFC, I would rage, bro. I'd be heavyweight champion easy, bro. I swear to God, bro, this is a true story. I was at a nightclub, and Brock Lesnar butted in, bro. He started dancing with my girl. I fucked him up, bro. And that was like two days before he fought Kane, bro. I'm the reason Kane beat him, bro. I swear to fuck, that's a true story, bro. Yeah, I'm sure, but we're getting off topic. Bro, already said everything, bro. Give these fighters every drug possible. I don't want to see any safety, bro. want to see some blood sport kumite shit, bro. Amazing insight, thanks. The first UFC on ESPN card is... Is this weekend and in our main event TJ Dillashaw is planning on burying the flyweight division alive obviously there's been some concern about whether TJ can make 125 so TJ's team released a dissertation which is apparently about his weight cut but I believe solved unified field theory meanwhile Henry Cejudo looks like this that's a big fucking Cejudo guys we're only a few days away how's the weight cut going this is the best weight cut in the history of ever I know my appearance may be shocking but I've spent the last week in the large hadron collider and this is actually the easiest weight cut I've ever had it's actually easier than when I'm not trying to cut weight. And after Friday, I'm going to super rehydrate and weigh 197 pounds. Well, it looks like Henry might weigh that right now. Henry, are you sure you're going to be able to make 125? Look, I'm not carrying any more weight than I normally do. Have you been talking to Anderson Silva? I don't know what you mean. It's nothing. Henry, should people be worried that you're going to miss weight? Maybe a little bit. You know, I'm not a scientist like TJ over here, but did I put a bunch of weight on? I mean, because when I look in the mirror, I just see I'm the same guy, you know? Yeah, Henry, you look fucking huge right now. Okay, well, fingers crossed. TJ, how hard has it been not eating Pischetti? That's definitely the hardest part, but um, with all the science that we're using, I've actually been able to eat a little bit more Pischetti than usual, but my lack of Pischetti, it just fuels my fire, and when I step in the cage, Henry Cejudo is going to be Pischetti, and I'm going to eat him. Nom, 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 nom. Yeah, well, I hope you brought some Parmesan, because I don't taste very good without without Parmesan. I'm not good at this this 
trash talk stuff. I don't know. That's all right, Henry. Well, I hope you both make weight. I hope you're both 100% for the fight, and I hope it's an awesome one. Thank you. I'm super excited about the future of the flyweight division. Coach Banks said that when I beat you, that the flyweight division is going to be like Santa Claus. Because Santa Claus was alive a long time ago, but now he just lives in our hearts, and he's not there anymore. But we still get presents because Coach Bang buys them. Huge fucking news for John Jones in the UFC. Turns out packing up that event on short notice and fucking everybody in Las Vegas paid off big time. Dave Meltzer is reporting that UFC 232 did 700,000 pay-per-view buys. That puts John Jones just behind Conor McGregor as the only active star that can sell pay-per-views. Third place is held by people thinking that Conor McGregor's on a pay-per-view and accidentally ordering it. Hey, you fucking goofs like that shit. Oh, Dana, how can you do that to people? You moved the event from Las Vegas. If you made New Year's Eve plans to go to that fight card in Las Vegas, and we ruined your New Year's for you? Let me say sincerely from the bottom of my heart, I don't give a fuck. We made like 24 million in pay-per-view revenue. You know what I think I'm gonna start doing? I think every once in a while, I'm just gonna randomly move an event the day of the event. You can't say all that press coverage didn't help get the word out about that card. All right, so next time we have a card like fucking Australia or some shit, I'll wait for everybody to get there, and then I'll be like, surprise fucking clown shoes. Brock Lesnar's allergic to kangaroos. We're moving the whole card to Japan. Yeah, we're gonna switch fucking continents this time. And all it's gonna do is sell more fucking pay-per-views. I told you guys 2019 is gonna be fucking huge. You'll know where the fuck the UFC is gonna pop up. Just because an event isn't scheduled in your town doesn't mean we won't be there this weekend. Remember that shit. I'm flying to Germany right now to get a stem cell massage. Later, goof. Well, well, well now. 700,000 pay-per-view buys. Do you hear that sound, Tommy? I don't hear anything. It's the sound of thousands and thousands of my haters DX sucking it so hard. Do you think your fight with Anthony Smith is gonna do as well? Oh, fuck no. That thing's gonna do terrible. But hey, I'm on top of the world till March. John, what is that with you there? Oh, this, this is a sandblaster. I'm just going to... I'm just bringing it to my hotel room so that I can look at a sandblaster and go, wow, that is a sandblaster. It has nothing to do with anything else, I promise. Good cover, John. He doesn't suspect a thing. Weird shit. In completely irrelevant news, Conor McGregor took to Instagram to call out Polly Malinaji and Habib Nurmagomedov, to which Habib replied on Twitter, to which Nate Diaz stepped in and said, I slapped you in your head and you and your team didn't do shit. Live with that, you're all pussies. Nate is of course referring to the brawl that went down at the World Series of Fighting. Here is a depiction of that fight from an earlier episode of Triple THS. They went back and forth a little bit more, but why talk about tweets when we can just have them work it out here on the show? All right, guys, let's try to solve this cordially, please. Fuck that. Fuck this motherfucking punk ass Mark motherfucking Mark ass motherfucking punk ass Mark bitch. Everybody knows what happened to World Theory to find this motherfucker got slapped. This is number one bullshit, you guys. Number one bullshit. None of this happened is the way they say it's happened. I was at World Series to fight to support my brothers. And I very go hungry. I want to Eagle Bear smash some popcorn. So I go to the concession and they say they're out of popcorn. The last box of popcorn go to this guy. And they point to Nate and his brother Nick. So I send him DM on Twitter. I say to him, why you eat popcorn? But he no reply. If he just replied, it's not happened. So I hop the fence and I go to talk to him. I just want to talk to him. No fight. I say maybe we can share popcorn. You got large. Then they start throw things at me. So we slipped him and they run away cowards. Their team number one bullshit. That is what happened. That's some kabul shit. I thought to slap your whole fucking team and you do shit. And then when security came, your boy started throwing chairs and shit. So I just ninja shit at the chair, and then we peeked the fuck out because we already slapped the shit out your ass. I beat your motherfucking ass, I beat Connor's motherfucking ass twice, everybody knows I'm that real shit. Real lightweight champion, motherfucker. whoop! Yeah, big time, real strong, tough guy. Your team run from us. You should have answered my DMs. Instead, you were slipped. But since you're so tough, how about I bring me and my bears? Just send me a location. Stock 209, motherfucker, what? Come roll up in here with those bears, they're gonna get clapped up. Fucking stock that gets invaded by bears every week. We'll give a fuck. So bring your whole motherfucking Mark-ass, punk-ass Mark crew. Stock that makes Russia look like some motherfucking Midwest suburb. Do you think there's ever a chance we'll see you two fight in the cage and not in some unsanctioned brawl? My main focus now is Floyd Mayweather. I have to get paid before this all goes away. I don't care about this chicken. Hey, if the price is right, bring 200 million trash bags unmarked bill to the crib. I'll fight whoever the fuck they want. Stay out of trouble, you two. Hey, real quick, shout out to Oranges for making your hands smell delicious. And fuck this motherfucker. In other scrap pack Twitter beef news, after Dylan Danis posted a picture of him with Jake Shields captioned, Hugging my son, Jake Shields dropped about 50 tons of nuclear savagery in response. I don't even know what to say to that one. The level of response is like if somebody tripped you, and in retaliation you went back in time and killed their earliest known ancestor, thus wiping their entire family from existence. Jake, what compelled you to be a goddamn Viking on Twitter? 
It was just to keep up appearances. I'm onto something big right now, Tommy. Jake, what is it you're onto? Do you remember Nick's fight with George St. Pierre? Those wraps, Tommy. You can't tell me those don't look weird. I mean, just look at them. Hands don't look like that. I've been chasing down leads for years. Nobody wants to talk about it. They keep saying, Jake, just let it go. Jake, it was no big deal. Jake, the commission oversees the hand wrapping process. But do they? Most people are too scared to talk, though. This thing goes all the way to the top. Something way bigger's going on here, Tommy. The wraps were just the beginning. I can't say much more, but if something happens to me, if you don't see me talking shit to Dylan Danis on Twitter again, I'm sending you a package, Tommy. If you don't hear from me, I want you to send this out to every major news organization in the world. I realize that by you doing that, it's a death sentence for you. But nobody cares if you die, Tommy. Gee, thanks, Jake. Well, I'll help you figure it out, man. Look into the raps. We go from talking about one welterweight champion to another. Tyron Woodley said recently that after he cleans out the welterweight division this year, he might be making a move up to middleweight. Everybody at middleweight, you're on notice. Because as soon as I burn through these last two clowns at welterweight, I'm gonna let my boy Funky have that division, and then I'm coming up to beat some ass at 185. And by beat some ass, I mean strategically beat you in a way that essentially forces you to have the worst fight of your career, and simultaneously the most boring fight of your career, that will end in a victory for me because I don't fight like a dumbass. Tyron, you're 36 years old, you've had a long career already. Why move up to middleweight now? 36 is nothing. I'ma drag this career out like Randy Couture. UFC's gonna have to fire their middleweight champion, and I will be middleweight champion. Hell, the top two middleweights right now are actually welterweights, but I figured I can hold on to that division for about a decade, and shit, if the UFC fires me, I'll just go to one championship and make like a billion dollars, and then I'll just start popping out rap albums. Basically, I can't lose. See, I play life just like I play the fight game. Strategically perfect, so that there's basically no risk whatsoever. How do you think you're gonna match up against those top middleweights? I mean, like I said, Robert Whitt Whitaker is a welterweight. I already fought Kelvin Gastelum at 200 pounds. Israel Adesanya's not stopping a double from me. Let's see him do all that crazy shit while I'm on top of him the whole fight. I'll never lose my title to Yoel Romero because he'll never make weight. Luke Rockhold's moving up to light heavyweight. As far as Jacare is concerned, I'll combine my strategy I had for Steven Thompson with my strategy for Damian Maya and beat him in the most boring decision in the history of MMA. If I fight Chris Weidman in New York, the commission will screw him somehow. And if Paulo Costa doesn't get suspended for five years in the next week, I would be shocked. So yeah, middleweight's on lockdown already. I gotta get back to champ camp later, Tommy. One fighter who is not moving up in weight is jiu-jitsu ace and sometimes strawweight Mackenzie Dern. Dern has missed weight now three times at strawweight, including her last bout at UFC 224 against Amanda Cooper, but according to ESPN, Dern has no intentions of moving up to the newly minted flyweight division. Mackenzie, walk me through this. Why have you chosen to stay at strawweight? Look, I know I've had some issues at strawweight. She says, I know I've had some issues at strawweight, but I feel like with my frame and my size. She says she feels like with her frame and her size, strawweight is the best place for me to fight and the most advantageous. She says strawweight's the best place for her to fight and the most advantageous. Are you concerned about the weight cut affecting your health? I've spoken with experts. She says she's spoken with experts. And my doctors have told me I can safely make 115. She says her doctors say she can make 115 safely. Well, I hope it all works out for you and that you never have any more problems with it. Thank you. She says thank you. Kat Zingano says she plans to appeal her loss to Megan Anderson at UFC 232. You might recall that the fight ended one minute in when a kick from Megan Anderson led to her featherweight toe being lodged in Kat Zingano's eye. The doctors called the fight. Zingano suffered eyelid damage and has been forced to wear an eye patch. Sub motherfucker. Hey Kat, you're looking badass. Yeah, I know I am. I'm so badass, I'm not even gonna use cat puns on this episode. Okay, just one, because it's too perfect. Ah, I see what you did. Cat, how do you react to these fans who are saying, This appeal is not warranted, it was a legal kick, it sucks you lost that way, but there's really nothing that can be done. Well, my first reaction to that would be to say, Fuck you to those people. Did you lose half your paycheck today, motherfucker? And secondly, I don't know if the rules are gonna change. All I know is, I got a fucking toe in my eye, and I thought my eye exploded. I thought if I opened my eye, my my fucking eye was gonna come oozing out. So sorry if this loss is a little bit of a big deal to me, you fucking assholes. Do you think the rules should be changed? Should an injury that's the result of a toe to the eye be an automatic no contest? I mean, I don't know, but it seems like a pretty big loophole. Just try to jam as much legal shit as you can into people's eyes, and then hopefully the doctor will just say that you won. I mean, if we're just gonna fucking rematch again right away anyway, and nobody really looks at it like an actual win or a loss, why the fuck is it a win or a loss on the record? I mean, I know Megan didn't do it on purpose and it sucks for her too, but the fucking unified rules say eye gouging and I got fucking eye gouged. I don't know. I'm gonna go do something badass. Stay possum, Tommy. Meow. And in our final story, Steve Miocic tweeted at Daniel Cormier this week to remind
my champ champ you choose balls balls that his 40th birthday was rapidly approaching and it was time to get that rematch in before he retires. Tommy, I tried to put it as politely as I could, but in case he didn't understand, let me spell it out right here right now. Stone Cold Stipe needs that damn belt back, and you best believe you some bitch that that's exactly what I'm gonna get by hook or by crook. The problem is, if you go on retiring, DC, I'm gonna have to take that belt from somebody else. I'm never gonna get a chance to avenge my loss, and that don't sit right with Stone Cold Stipe. Uh -uh. I'll end up taking it out on all these other heavyweights, and there's gonna be mud holes stopped in every single one of their asses. So I'm asking you nicely, for the second time right here, right now, for the sake of every other heavyweight in the UFC, and because I respect the hell out of you, you lovable son bitch. But make no mistake about it, if March 20 rolls around and Stone Cold Stipe don't have his rematch, if Stone Cold Stipe don't get one more chance at that title before you ride off into the sunset, I'ma come find you and your birthday present is gonna be my boot in your ass. And then I'ma fill your favorite vehicle with cement because I rented a damn cement truck for your birthday. What? Don't make Stone Cold Stipe come after you, DC, because you're starting to piss me off and a pissed off rattlesnake is not something you want to deal with. I'll put your damn lights out. That belt belongs to Stone Cold Stipe. Brock Lesnar hasn't done shit in a decade, but lay on top of Mark Hunt for 15 minutes and then get popped for being a cheating some bitch. He don't have it anymore. So again, this is me asking you nicely one last time, and I suggest you take me up on it. Hell, we can even get some Stipe wisers afterwards and a few ham and cheese sandwiches. But that's if you accept now, DC, if you take my polite offer. Because when I come around next time, ain't gonna be no words. You're just gonna hear the glass break and then it's gonna be your ass. And that's the bottom line because Stone Cold Stipe said so. Viewer comment time. This week's viewer comment comes to us from Artez Gentry, who said about last week's video, you ugly as hell. Your nose had me thinking my phone was cracked. Hey, if you think I care what someone thinks about my non-existent triangle nose, you're just, you're wrong, all right? I'm sorry I made you worry about your phone. Fight fans, if you want to rock that Eagle Bear Smash gear along with a ton of other Triple THS, MMA, wrestling, video game shit, Rear Naked Cloaks is the place to go. We've also got brand new Bushido Talk podcast gear. Damn, that's a slick design. Get it in red, black, or white. What other fucking colors do you need? The link is in the description, and so is the link to the Triple THS Plus Patreon campaign. YouTube has fully demonetized my channel, so there are no more pre-roll ads. We're rocking this thing PBS style now, motherfuckers. If you want to support the show, click on the link to get the details, and if not, no big deal at all, seriously. Thank you for watching. Making you guys laugh is the most important thing. For everybody at Triple THS, I'm Tommy Toehold. We're in the end game now. Hey, this shit ain't over yet. It's time for some shout out to 209 represent motherfucker Dave Wilder, Jason McKee, the homie Andrew Black, Bernie Musatelli, Nick fucking Roma, Blind Whiskey, not to be confused with seeing Vodka, George Fisher, Paul McCallion, I got your back. Clint Boyd, Lou Boy, me and Blagov, and Matt for going by just one name like his fucking soccer robber, motherfucker. Whoop.